Okay, we're back on a hot, hot Dutch day. It's not nearly not as, as bad as, as yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was a bit gnarly, but yeah. Actually, I think we made it through the whole day yesterday without complaining about it for the most part. That's because I stayed in my room in air condition <laughs> the entire day. Like, Yaya wanted to uh, to go outside and I was like, honey, you literally picked the hottest day in Holland ever <laughs> yeah. to go walk around. Hi. Hi. So they managed to show up exactly as we start. So hi. Yeah. <laughs> and we have the dog. We have everybody. It's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, yesterday was actually the hottest day in Holland ever. Yeah. And so we have the fan going. So if you yeah. hear a little fan noise, you're it's just going to happen. If you hear it. the weird sound, is most likely the dog walking on the hardwood floor and he slides a lot. Yeah. He slides a lot. So he eats shit about every day. <laughs> and the funniest thing about this is he scares himself. The yeah. reason he eats he, he shit every day is because he hears a noise, scares himself, which makes him go faster, which of course makes him <laughs> slide, and then he ends up hitting something or just full blown falling, so once which it, scares him so, even more. So once it starts, the whole thing escalates very quickly. He can't eat out of the bowl sometimes because he pushes the bowl, he makes noise and scares him. So he eats and then he jumps back, then he approaches, and yeah, that's the same dog that can't get from under the blanket, by the way. <laughs> yes, the one you can hear in the back right now. Problem solving is not quite his thing. No, it's not his thing. So uh, this week, what do we got this week? So um, so last time we talked about the software versus hardware. Yep. So I want to go a little bit more into this. I want to go into the selfish brain theory because it opens a specific door that I found very interesting that we can link toward the melanocortin axis and back to the importance of the sympathetic nervous system for weight loss. Yeah. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. Uh, I, one of the main things that I would like people to understand why we do the protocol and everything is that most people see weight gain and weight loss as a calorie in versus calorie out. Mm -hmm. uh, energy deficit means weight loss. Energy, um, what's the opposite of deficit? Surplus. Surplus yeah. means uh, gain. And that's not the way it is. So more and more, we s <sighs> that's an oversimplification that always drives me insane. Because mm -hmm. that's looking at the body just as a set of, you know, uh, <sighs> As like a set of like, as like a chemistry a, set, yeah. like it's just a bunch of plumbing that comes in and out. Yeah, and then you just put, but it's like you, you know, like you still see some people saying fifteen calories is fifteen hundred calories, no matter what. Yeah, it's like so you're telling me your body will react the same whether it's fifteen hundred calories of steak or fifteen hundred calories of ice cream. Yeah, and they say yes, or for weight gain or weight loss. I, I just find that the the or, most or like what your body's capable of thing. coping with at but, any given moment. But too. how can ice cream and steak be the same? Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I, like I see that sometimes in the fitness industry, and the guys are adamant because they're like, "Well, that's what the numbers say." But it's not a game of number. I don't do think, think people understand what calories are. Do you think that hard, a lot of that hard line comes from though? I don't know. I, there's a part of me that kind of gets where they're coming from because I, I used to, hear, and it always made sense, but only because in dealing with the general population. It's like you have to help them sort through so much shit. But that's the excuse everybody true. uses every time. It's yeah. like, so what? We're going to lie to people to make it easier? Yeah. That is such a poor yeah. excuse. This is the same excuse people use for school. Yeah. Well, you know, not all, all kids are as smart as the top ones. And so, you know, like we're going to basically they tell you shit in physics that are not true. But, you know, because we don't want to confuse you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. That I, I get. I, I disagree entirely. Yeah. I had that argument, by the way, with some people at HQ about uh, learning to uh, press with a PVC or stuff like that. It was like, well, your people are not capable of that. It's like then we need to be to do a better job at educating mm -hmm. them. That was one of the first things we had talked about, even when uh, you were first on my podcast a couple of years ago. Now, about was, talk. Was that yeah, was the first when talk was coming up, and I was in my head. It was such a new concept to me. I'm like, Jesus, where would I start? With this, and and that was what you said then. He's like, so you are you just supposed to teach people wrong? Yeah. And then you got to yeah. undo that later. So that does make a little sense. No, but okay, but yeah. imagine as a group of people, if we agree with that, maybe as an individual on a per cases basis, if you yeah. want. But imagine as a group, where do we go from there? Nowhere. Yeah. That you never push anything anywhere. Is like, are we content with the way things are? By the way, we're not winning. No. Obesity is going is, up. And uh, that's, that's what I see with, with, with any of these things, it's, you know, people being very hard and fast about all that. I'm like... Like it's working. Exactly. Like, you know, look at the race, anxiety, depression, obesity. Like we're not winning. No. And yet they all go like, well, that's the way we've been, you know, always been doing it. I'm like, exactly. Yeah. Like we're not... But imagine if we had said that again after Isaac Newton, mm -hmm. then we would not have computers. Like the only reason we... Evolution, we move forward. It's it's like having a business. There's no status quo in no, business or in evolution. If you stay the same, you, you die. Yeah. 
right? So that idea that like, yeah, well, we've been doing it like that. Yes, and we've been losing like that. Like, yeah. how many diets survive past 12 weeks? Very little. Very right? Little. And so that's why in the protocol we say, look, it's not that kind of a diet. It requires you to do the work. Otherwise, you'll never sustain. If I tell you what to eat, it will work six to eight weeks. Yeah. Then you'll crash. And because it's not that, it's the software that matters and more than the hardware. And so much of what we're going to get hardware into today with well. selfish yeah. brain theory is about that modern life. But like the way life and is And why. Now. Yes, exactly. And then, and, and so, and I think that this, this piece here is a really interesting as like a key or, or, yeah. or a cornerstone at least on why maybe we are losing because and, we aren't thinking of it like exactly. this. Exactly. And that's a very important part is why are we losing? To most people, they're going to see fatty, you eat too much, mm -hmm. right? The reason of obesity is you're getting too much carbs. You're just eating too much. It's willpower. So, yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we're having exact same argument with drugs. We're having the same argument with depression. Every time it's like fatty, suck it up. Mm -hmm. Or uh, wussy, suck it up. Yeah. Or druggy, suck it up. Yeah. And we're not understanding the why it's happening. Again, going back to the last podcast, to most people, it's either um, chemistry or willpower. And so, that's the, it's one or the other, right? It's those two. What we discover now, there's a third, which is the intent through the nervous system and all that stuff. So the big, what we see with obesity is, uh, so back to that Einstein quote, right? We have to understand the history of humanity and the philosophy behind, for example, weight gain versus weight loss to truly understand what's happening with obesity. To most people, because they have the surplus versus deficit, they go like, yeah, you're just eating too much. Stop shoving food in your mouth. They, they, and they, it's not entirely wrong, but it's not entirely true either. The problem is it's far more complex and subtle than this, yeah. right? For example, it's more human than that also, because exactly. there's a reason that this person can't, isn't just figuring out how to eat less. And, but consistent. again, if you look at the hardware, there's even problem with that. When you say carbs make you fat, well, that's fairly obvious because mm -hmm. you see people on keto diets, they start losing weight right away. And yet we have used carbs on mice, which are, uh, you know, like ph physiologically, not on the software, but on the hardware part, they're actually very close to us. Mm -hmm. Physiologically speaking, they're very, very close to us. That's why we use the white mouse for every, uh, every study when we can do an, uh, on uh, humans, right? We fed them like high doses of carbs and the weight gain was not there. Yeah. Not really. Like not, not specially, right? So you go like, so carbs don't make people fat. Yes, they do. But so now the question is why? Since it doesn't seem to be the hardware at nearly as much as we think, because we tested that on mice and we didn't see the increase, the, the obesity rate, right? So it's not that you feed a lot of carbs to mice. Of course, they're going to get bigger, but not to the extent that we see happening in human yeah. society right now. So you can calculate the odds, right? And you discover that carbs don't seem to be nearly that impactful on weight gain as you see happening to humans. So the question is why? And that's where the software comes in. Right? And yeah. that's why it's so important. And that's what this is trying to explain, saying like, guys, it's not just the, the surplus. It doesn't seem to work like that. There's something else at play. Yeah. So the reason now we're finally starting to understand is because now there are studies made on obesity because obesity is such a large problem. So now we're starting to actually have the funding toward all that stuff to understand the cause of obesity. And it's not as simple as people make it out to be. Yeah. So that being said, we also have to see that everything, all the work that is done right now is relating to obesity. So that means that for the fitness industry, we're going to have to take that work, understand what it means so that we can direct it toward what we want, which yeah. is fat loss and muscle gain and stuff like that. So again, those studies are made for obesity and only for that. So the context, you have to understand the context of those, of those studies a little bit, right? Yeah. But it's important to understand that, the, for example, the weight gain mechanism is not nearly as understood as we make it out to be. We say like you, you just gain no because it's people with a calorie surplus that have lost body fat like I did, mm -hmm. right? As you say, I got a lot thicker. I'm sure you can see yeah. it on camera, right? So I went from about 220 to 230, like I'm at 231, 232, while dropping body fat or at least staying the same. So you see that I did the in body scan, yeah, and I still get shit over that one. <laughs> I can't win. No, it doesn't. I matter. put picture. They're like, well, that doesn't mean. That's picture, I put picture of lighting. Kyla saying like looking the same, like you didn't do a, a scan. I do, do a scan. Yeah. The scan doesn't mean anything. I'm like, oh, you motherfuckers! Yeah. Like I'm gonna block all of you. <laughs> that's gonna be. It. Now, I mean, like that's that. But by the way, you know, I, I know I bitch about this a lot, but it's working because did you see the comments on YouTube? Every uh, people are so respectful. <laughs> it's been very nice. Yes. It works. Very nice. No, but yeah. you have to ask for people yeah. to not be yeah. the fucking assholes <laughs> that are on the internet right now. It's working. Yeah. I love the. You, you, you see the conversation on the Strong Fit Community Group. Yes. 
Come on, yeah. those are good. Great. Those are smart people, yeah. and we have actually a conversation. Yeah, because there's a, they can't there's be all from the Midwest. No, you know what I mean, like they so, it's be. it's working. Like people <laughs> talking, normal conversation yeah. is great. And it's like there's a there's a firm no cattiness policy in the group. That and we're not it's playing. Like, it's like, yeah. no, 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 and everybody no, 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 knows. Games. And yeah. guess what? Now you have adult conversations. Yeah. Like what about this versus that? Now we can talk. I can share stuff. Yeah. And you know, people send you books, studies to read. In ah, uh, it is. It's a pleasure. So then it makes me want to interact with them. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm like, fuck off, dude. <laughs> like, I'll block you from Instagram, you won't see, an, and from the podcast and yep. YouTube and everything. And then you go figure out the shit. I don't yeah. need you, sorry. <laughs> no! Like, that way, the whole capitalist, like, we're supposed, we're going to, you know, monetize everything we do. So I want all of you. No, not I don't. Not how I don't. Involved. I don't want all of you. I can tell you that. They always say you don't need, you don't need 100,000 customers. You just need 1,000 really good ones. Exactly. I want the good ones. I want yeah. to fix for once the ones I want to learn. The other yeah. ones can go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's my point. Anyway. Yes, I am honest. I don't want Yeah, yeah exactly. So the 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 nature of this of this theory here called selfish brain theory. Yeah. Right? Like we have to go and, to evolution first by the way. Yeah. Okay. So this seems to come from I would say basically just prioritization of energy resources right, right? so That's it's a software it. yeah right so it basically it is about a, it's about decision making decision making it's about processing of information which yeah. is literally the software yeah. right that the code reading basically is what determines which way you go so we're going back to the melanocortin access study yeah. that we did a podcast on that was stating that it was not about energy energy intake it was about which side of the nervous system, right? Vagus nerve versus the melanocortin yeah. axis, so parasympathetic versus sympathetic, that determined whether you were going to lose fat or gain fat, right? So that was a very important part. And it seems that it, it basically happens through the whole software like that. So again, we're going back at hardware versus software. Like the hardware is what we study. So people say, well, you have a surplus, this happens. I'm like, yes, but why? That, that's the thing. Is that idea that you have sur surplus, you gain? Sometimes, yeah. sometimes no. That, That's and, the problem. And also that, that not you particularly, but that your body has fucking options that it has to go through. Because like that, I, mean, goodness, right? I, I like to boil it down to something simple, almost more like uh, like nutri nutrient partitioning, where it's like, you know, yes, you have a surplus of carbohydrates. What are we doing right now? Yes. And what do we? What can they help us for? What can we store? And that's going to be different for each person, how they train and what they do. And um, and that's why this it's it seems very similar to me in this regard where um, there's time when your brain needs this for this and it's going and, to and take we all it. Know, yeah. yeah and by the way it's the brain too and sometimes there's different parts of the brain so which part of the brain needs what do they all require the same amount of energy yeah. no they don't and so there's a lot of stuff so we're going that's why I think the last podcast was so important because it showed that we look at the body like a non-life thing, mm -hmm. right? You put more stone, there's more stone. Like, you know, yeah. you put more charcoal, there's a bigger fire. It was, it yes. Was, it was that like a uh, collection of parts mentality often. Which have. is, but because that's what physics deals with, mm -hmm. right? You look at a star and everything, yeah, because the, as far as we know, the star is not alive, right? So then you can understand the physics of it and you know how to make it move. So the key is we want to live in a deterministic universe where A causes B. Why? Because it's fucking simpler. Yeah. You can sell shit. Yeah. Right? And that's why I think the 1500 calories ice cream or whatever makes no difference because it's easier to sell a template. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, it makes it easier to explain. No, it gives you less of a job to yeah. educate people. I think at the end, it's not about the person being educated because we blame it on them saying they're not smart enough to understand. No, you're just not good enough to teach it's it. It's hard. People it's, don't understand yeah. how hard that is. Like we, oh. we get I, by into, the way, I'm not denying that fact. No, and, we, and we get into, like, with the, we do exactly, we do that with the nutrition and the training groups right now, where we're trying to do things as we see them right. Meaning, like, we don't want to just put things out yes. there and go do it. And if you, did, if you did it, if it didn't work for you, then it's just because you suck. Yeah. Like, we have to be a part of helping right. so you with it. So it's hard, but look at the results we get. For sure. And they're worth it. Protocol, 90% plus, the training, we've seen some breakthroughs. Yeah. So it's not that people are too dumb. It's just you're not good enough yeah. to teach them. Yeah, and I think and I think that if somebody has a template and runs with it and understands it and it works, certainly that can work for them. The problem the, is chances are you're wrong. Those that aren't, yeah, <laughs> those that it but, doesn't work for, then what do we do with them? Do we just yeah. blame it on them? And by the way, most of the time, the one that have a template and make it work, they have 
humongous uh, intake into what's being written. They either wrote in themselves or talk to their coach. The coach knows them, mm -hmm. so there's actually a lot of a back and forth. Yeah. I've yet to see people outside of the first six weeks, because let's be honest, first of all, is you do anything for six to 10 weeks, it'll work, mm -hmm. right? You haven't trained in six months, you start training, you're gonna be so out shit, but yeah. it's gonna work, right? Yeah, I give I give bad advice for people when they first start training. Yeah, I'm exactly. Like, 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 if 10 sets of 10, I'm like, well, I'm like, German system. And, and, also, uh, yeah. and also, I'm like, I'm like, listen, and if you're small, just eat more. I don't care what it is. At this point, we'll sort the rest out later. But you have, you have right now like six to eight months of just gains that'll make everyone jealous. Like, let's just do <laughs> no, big okay. guy stuff. Let's be honest. Time. Those are two big guys talking. <laughs> but it's a lot bigger than me, but still. Anyway. Um, so, so, so this here, though, what yeah, we right. have. Let's, do we want to go at this? You said evolution right. first? So, yeah, right. Evolution first. Because so, that's a background for that. Right. right. Because we have to understand that the, they are different... Evolution means that we don't start from scratch every million year or every 500,000 years. We build up on top of each other. So sometimes the systems interact with each other, sometimes they fight each other. So we have to understand a little bit how the whole thing works because that'll tell you where we are right now as a society and why we're losing the war on obesity. Okay. So first of all, um, we, we talk about the state, the, what is called the phylogenetic hierarchy, right? That's something we, we made uh, podcasts about and lots of talk, right? The idea was by the way, it's not my term. Phylogenetic just means the evolution of the nervous system. Um, if, so if we go back all the way to the first nervous system, that's a flat world, mm -hmm. right? That's about five, six hundred million years. And then we, uh, basically that, that's where the states came in. Evolutionally speaking, though, you can see that from a unicellular creature, amoebas or whatever, all the way up to here, there's been defense systems in place. Yeah. Right. So the first defense system that ever was in place is not fight. That's what people think. It's actually not that. It's replication and playing dead. Those are actually the two ways that the uh, unicellular cell, like you see amoebas, you attack them, they go into a cyst. Mm -hmm. That's playing dead, and then they, they wait, and then they start to duplicate. Yeah. Right? That's actually the first. That's immortality from because they, they the only replicate thing themselves. That they can do. Yes. Basically. Right. That's yeah. how it starts. And then you go through evolution, and then eventually we get to reptilian. We get to that stuff. So if we take a human being, what do we see? We see that the earliest nervous system that we have was a playing dead mechanism, invertebrates and stuff like that, right? Then you start to see evolution. You go toward the fight mechanism, fight or, fight or flight. That's mm -hmm. sympathetic. That's older, yeah. right? And then eventually you get that's to the... Your, that's your short term. Your, yeah. Your really survive, Don't eat, think. Just fucking... Yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. Right? Survival yeah. mentality and Live all that die. stuff. Deceit, yeah. all that stuff lives in there, right? And then you see the, the later part of evolution. That's where uh, we go back toward the efferent part of the vagus nerve, which is control of the mind over the body in a way, mm -hmm. which means, um, for example, and that's the polyvagal theory from Dr. Porges, expression of emotion, right? I can control the, so the expression of emotion on my face through control of this right here so that I can communicate friendliness versus aggressiveness. Yeah. If you get to somebody who yells like this, yeah, you know, it right looks away. violent. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a super nice guy. For whatever reason, I must not control <laughs> my face very well. Um, and so, but while if you come and you're relaxed, yeah. then you know I don't imply danger. Okay, so that is a learned skill. I can decide to show aggressiveness or not, right? Mm -hmm. That's the latest part of our evolution, right? We have yeah. control of this. That's through the ventral part of the vagus nerve. Okay. That's the last part. So why is it important? Because you see the same thing with the brain. You have three stages of brain, right? You have the... Uh, well, let's go with these terms. You have the oldest one, then you have the, the limbic brain, which is where emotion. So you have reptilian brain first. You have limbic brain, which is where all the emotions live, decision making, and that's all that stuff, actually. Yeah. And then from there, you go toward the higher brain function, the neocortex that got created. That's when words come in, all that stuff. So all the stuff that allows the, what we say is thinking rationally, yeah. right? Which allows us to communicate and start to be more active in that sense, okay. right? The older part of the brain is actually not expensive at all to run. Emotions or that stuff, that's why you can have such high emotion all the time because it doesn't use that much energy to run. Okay. So we used to move a lot and think little. That's reptilian, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then after that, you go to limbic, so that's more emotion, but it's still not expensive. The neocortex, though, is extremely expensive. So it's a lot of thinking for very little movement. Its job is not as much movement as it is figuring out shit mm -hmm. in society, how to interact, the tribal mentality aspect, right? All that stuff comes from there. So not the survival instinct that goes back to reptilian, but the capacity to solve problems in society so that we get stronger as we go. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting about that is if you look at the older part, sympathetic, all that stuff, is mostly afferent. It's mostly your body, 
telling that part of your brain what's happening. So that means it's very much reactive to the environment. Yeah. So to activate the sympathetic and all that stuff, emotions, I need the environment to tell me, to tell that to me. Which means you need to move and experience the environment. Exactly. And if you want a certain emotion, you're going to have to go get it, right? And stuff like that, right? So it's the environment affecting you. The latest part of the evolution is actually the other way. Like the the, the higher brain function, actually, uh, the goal is that this will tell that what to do instead of the other way. So you're more active proactive than reactive yes that's the latest part of evol- evolution is speaking all the older stuff is mostly reactive all the new stuff is mostly proactive that's why we see that on the vagus nerve the dorsal part so the body telling the brain is about 80 percent of the vagus nerve okay. only 20 percent is the ventral part and that's why we've been developing evolution is speaking in the last million years is that capacity for us to go yeah, to, for the mind to tell the body what to do the if there's a downside it means it's very very energy expensive Mm -hmm. he uses a lot of energy to do that and because that's what the phylogenetic hierarchy tells us is like whenever there's a problem we start with the most evolved part of the nervous stem first that means whenever there's an issue the higher brain function kicking first okay and they're also the most expensive so that means most of the energy goes to the higher brain function first that's very important because that's going to lead to what they what we're starting to think is the cause actually at least the main cause of obesity okay and so this isn't about people choosing to think more or anything like this i think i I think what this is about is that our life is our lives are just devoid of a lot of absolute uh survival moments but because that's what society is yeah so in order to get smarter we need to have more and more energy toward getting smarter, less and less toward moving. So the only way to get smarter is to be safer. Yeah. So literally the goal of society, which is evolution, right, is to get us to a place where we are smarter. So society keeps growing and, grow- and getting better as it goes, yeah. more and better. To do that, it has to be safer. Because the safer it is, the less energy I have to spend fighting, surviving, the more I- energy I can spend thinking. Yeah. So it is, when we say we all soft now in today's world, yeah, because otherwise we wouldn't be as smart. Yeah. So smart and soft, in a way, they kind of go together. That's why, you know, they're like the jocks versus the nerds. Yeah. As a group, this, that doesn't mean you can't do both. Don't get me wrong, the Greeks knew that you had to be smart and fit. But why? Because they live in an environment where war happened all the time. So they tried to think, but they knew that you had to be fit enough because the Huns were at the gate. Yeah, that's for Rome. But anyway, yeah. uh, you, you know what I mean. So, but that means also that as a society, it's only going to get worse in that sense. Can we go through? I want to. I want you to just mic. Yeah, whatever mic yeah. is right. Let's go through now what how this is going to affect him. Mike has a regular job. Right. Mike doesn't train much or at all. Yeah, exactly. Uh, how does so, this affect his? what happens to the calories that he eats. Yeah, so the problem with Mike is he lives in a society that is designed to become safer and safer and safer, which is good, right? Because then Mike can get smarter at what he does. We can create more shit. We can go to the moon and all that, right? Procreate. Exactly, everything is fine. So, and by the way, we see more and more autism because of an evolutionary trait where you can spend more and more of that energy toward one thing and get awesome at it. Autistic people are the worst. Uh, They require longer to, to raise. Mm-hmm. far more energy so less kids in the family that, that are less capable of defending themselves especially in the early age yeah. and then they leave the home later so from in an unsafe envir- environment autism means you're dead yeah because stop making the fucking thing perfect go fucking kill the bear you know yeah. it's not ready yeah <laughs> i mean like i know i can't to speak all the time so, but i mean like so you can see that in today's society you will naturally see a rise of autism not autism spectrum disorder by the way this, that's where people get confused but yeah. you could see how autism is an evolutionary trait moving forward in the society but to for that the society has to be safe mm-hmm. right so safe means what safe means a weakening of the sympathetic nervous system right the problem with that is with the weakening of the sympathetic nervous system. That's where the melanocortin access study so comes then in. So we're talking fat gain. Exactly. Yeah. And or, right, or, or regardless, at the very least, a very difficult time losing fat. No, no, no. Right? Like, Remember that what that study yeah. says is that regardless of energy intake, the second is ablation of the innervation of the sympathetic, yeah. we see fat mass gain. Sorry, yeah. I'm using fancy term. Uh, the second you have uh, you weakening the of the sem- yeah. you cut the nerve, so weakening, complete weakening of the nervous system. We saw the mice getting fat yeah. regardless 
of how much they were eating. They ate exactly the same amount of food as the other test group of mice yeah. and started gaining fat where the other didn't. The only difference is one had the sympathetic system ready, the other one didn't. Okay. So Mike is gradually just deadening his sympathetic system by right. just and avoiding it. Exactly. I remember the sympathetic nervous system is much older. It reacts to our environment. Yeah. The environment we are creating is safe. So therefore, the sympathetic gets weaker. You cannot access the sympathetic just with your state of mind. That's yeah. where it, like the whole mindset stuff mm -hmm. to a degree. But you have to understand that over long periods of time, you will fail. Yeah. You will not maintain the sympathetic reaction because it cannot be triggered. Because you're trying to think your way into something that is not meant That to is be not designed like that. It's yeah. designed to deal with the environment. Yeah. So if the environment is soft, you're always going to have a weaker response. That doesn't mean weak response. It means yeah. weaker yeah. response. At some point, the sympathetic that you generate with this will come to a glass ceiling. Yeah. So you can do it to a certain level, but then you're going to hit the glass ceiling. The only way forward is to create the environment necessary for the sympathetic to take over. And that is not something you can create mentally by definition. Yeah. Like your evolution is taking, does not, it basically says the exact opposite. Yeah. So how does one do that? How does one, we, you mentioned like you have to, we have to create an environment that's yes. enforced. And I'm assuming you're getting at something via training. Okay, that, so right? now we need to create a sympathetic environment. So that means a dangerous one. Yeah. Right. So what does that mean dangerous? This is where we can trick the system a little yeah. bit. Right. You could be, but that's basically that's what you see anyway. Look at the best gyms in the world. It's not because of their system. Mm -hmm. Look, let's talk about Westside. Yeah. Is the reason Westside does so well is because of their periodization, the not conjugate system. No, no, no. The conjugate system is, has been tried by it's almost everybody. It doesn't work. Everyone well. in there will fucking eat you alive. That's and, what matters. And there's risk limits <laughs> in the back saying, fuck off. Yeah. The second you don't do it his way, if you don't get on your yeah. way to a record, you're out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the environment of the gym is hostile. It's very hostile. <laughs> so what does that create? A fight or flight response. If yeah. you're not capable of handling it, you're out. Mm -hmm. To stay in, you're going to have to basically get into fight mode the second you walk in the door. That will create the environment necessary for you to grow muscle, lose fat, get stronger. And I think there's a there's a good balance too. There's a line somewhere in there between having a, a good socially supportive environment to train in, but also you need an environment where everybody is there to fucking kill a, a exactly. little bit. There has to be some of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And By the way, if everybody is an asshole, that doesn't work either. No, that just cause flight, no, right? No. So it requires two things. It requires the environment to be hostile but you wanting to be there. Mm -hmm. So that's where Louis Simmons comes in because he's a mentor and a father figure to all his lifters. They go, yes, Louis. So they want to be coached by the guy. Yeah. So he created a hostile environment where everybody wants to be there. And, and that's the hardest thing and, to achieve. And, and here's the, the deal. If it, there's a documentary out there that I highly mm -hmm. recommend, West Side versus the World. The, guys, the guy who made that movie, the amount of bullshit he had to go through to make that movie, isn't he... He did like a Kickstarter GoFundMe thing, raised a ton of money, actually lots of money, had a business partner who basically took all that money and disappeared in some sort of drug scheme, just took off. Okay. And he's left holding the bag. And so he then has to do another round of fundraising, delay everybody, yeah. make the movie still, get the movie out, years delayed. That's and why so, it took so long. To forever. Yeah. Because I, all I, the money disappeared. The money was there, it disappeared, start over. Oh, because I learned about it a long time ago. Yeah. I was like, what happened? Yeah, yeah. I feel ter terrible for the guy. So, oh, and so, but anyway, in that, so I highly recommend you get it on iTunes. But that's, when you want to talk a hostile training environment, every single person, world champion or not, yeah. that's been through there, will go through there. That environment will bring you to the top of and your they, potential or break you, you on the way. Yeah. But then, break, break but, a lot of them. But then yeah. you're done. Yep. None of these people, like like those people, they all leave. Yeah. Even all the greats. Eventually, there's a moment like this yeah. where they're out the door. Again, because at, that hostile is great to the point where you don't want to be there anymore. Yeah. You don't want to be there anymore, you have to run out the door. And that environment has produced some of the strongest human beings in history in that sport. In, which means, in multiply power. Yeah, correct, correct. In that, in that sport. But not in raw power. But, but which yeah. does mean that you are at the fringes of human potential. So I don't I wouldn't recommend that your gym and have with, that with some help on top of it. Yes, yeah. No, yes. no, no, I'm just using yeah. an example. Do not do yeah. West Side. For sure. Your, but yeah. but I, but I think that there is there is value in that in, in what that environment produces. That is a, an elite environment. But okay, with so an elite let, level of stress. Let, let's talk about the gym for actually what it was the best at, which is was not the powerlifting because to me 
they just play the rules and the multiply and all that shit. Mm -hmm. What people don't know so much is how many NFL guys, football players, the college of, athletes, the amount of MMA wrestlers, fighters MMA now. fighters. Like, so that's what actually I think the gym did the best. Mm -hmm. And that's what you don't see because the, most of the argumentation is because of the powerlifting. Because yeah. they use multiply yeah. and then uh, the squat they juice out of their mind and squat high. And they do. Yep, okay, so sure. there's a lot of valid criticism yep. there. But what most people don't see is the amount of people that are not relating to powerlifting that came into that gym to be trained with Lou or just in that environment yep. and who thrived in their and stuff. And still to this day, you wouldn't believe the number if you just look at the amount yes. of college strength and conditioning coaches, top division one coaches who have their, their program or at the very least have Louis as a mentor. Um, it's, and, it's very and, interesting. And again, like the people understand how hard it is to create an environment like that. Like he takes a Louis Simmons. When he's gone, they he goes Westside. They said it's gone. Yeah, that's yeah. It. I don't think he'll. I mean, he can give it to somebody else, but it'll never be the same, yeah, right? Just, because yeah. again, yeah, that's past the podcast. But it's such it's such a hard thing for him. So I think what he's done for all those uh, athletes, people don't even know about that one. But nope. I think that's the greatest thing about Westside yeah, is this for sure. Because by the way, I'm the one who read the Westside book twice. Yeah, right. I'm probably <laughs> the only one in the world. Most people haven't read. <laughs> Like that's the thing is everybody's like West Side. Have you read yeah. the book? Because I have again twice, and you notice the stories, the name change, <laughs> but they're all the same story. I, it's, I, yeah. Whatever, <laughs> whatever. I read it. There you go. I can do it again. So, so we need to create anyway. an environment in which that, that's one way. Yep. Yeah. That that there's that also just in how you CrossFit. Train. Yes. CrossFit. You turn the clock on. Yeah. Right. Now, oh, I have to, and then there's a guy next to me, right? So they created, yeah. again, a hostile environment where you want to be. So they created a fight mode mm -hmm. up to the moment where the shit accumulates and you don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, then you go in flight and then you're fucked. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And then we all the problem that we... But that's why uh, I believe like CrossFit is so successful. Uh, if you look at training women, CrossFit has changed the way we train women forever. No one has had the success when it comes to making women strong. Forget fit strong yeah. as CrossFit. Isn't that weird? Absolutely. With high volume, high intensity training. Everything we were told not to do, yeah. CrossFit did. And you, for guys are still a bunch of yeah. But the, <laughs> the women are unbelievably strong. Look yeah. at the women, number of women that can snatch 90 kilos. Yeah. The, people remember five, six years ago, 90 kilos, like, I remember it was Lindsay Valenzuela. Yeah, <gasps> oh my God, was she's this? like national <laughs> level. She would, she would win this year. Yeah. And now they all fucking do it. Yeah. Now they all like 100, 105 on yeah. a regular basis. Now I'm like, what? This shit hurts my feelings. <laughs> I, I'm kind of upset myself. Uh, anyway, so, but again, it was the same idea, right? Mm -hmm. So there are different ways to do that. Is that the only way? No. There's a way to, and it's not a hack, but to get into it. Because again, the problem with all of those is sustainability. Yeah. Right? And we talk about this all the time. Like you do, we side then, yeah, but you're 30 and done for life. Yeah. By the way, all those guys that come out of drugs, that place. stress, body weight. Uh, gaining, yeah. gaining fat, yeah, all the drugs. And also, the quantities are yes, mind-fucking-blowing. Also, Five grams of test a week. <laughs> I was like, how, TRT is 100 milligrams yeah. uh, a so week. Where are you putting all that oil, you know? but they have, That's what they gain weight. That's the ass is so big, it's because it's full of oil. The, um, it's... Oh shit! I forgot where I was going. Sorry, I'm normally I you off. I'm normally pretty good about that, but Sorry. not today. Yeah, Let's I was making on. fun about the drug <laughs> intake. There we go. I caught you off. <laughs> Swim of balance. Um, so that's one way to do it is to create that environment. But is it sustainable? No. Sustainability is the key, right? So you go website, but then when they're done, they usually mm -hmm. they're basically done lifting. Yeah. Like you you see that with Mark Bell, like he's doing bodybuilding now, mm -hmm. but. Uh, like the, the, the they just can't push the size, the top end strength forever. It, Not it take like its toll. Yeah. Like and and they are famous for training hurt and all that stuff. Like that whole toughness stuff will get you, but can you sustain? Right. So it's not enough to have the top athlete that are three, four year career and then crash forever. Mm -hmm. We also have to think about sustainability. So my job is not just the top athletes. It's also the regular people. Mike yeah. has a desk job, right? So. If we apply that kind of stuff, but in three years from now, he's injured, done, and you'll never train again, then you'll just get fat, and that's not what you want. Then so we, we have to understand him. how to deal with the software in order to help not just the Mark Bell of this world, but also the Mike's of this world, right? So, and that's where the neoprene came in, because the idea is most of the weight of the sympathetic uh, system, weight, I mean, like innervation, goes all the way to the skin. So yeah. a lot of the way to access the sympathetic nervous system is through the skin. When you say innervation, by the way, to clarify, you mean... The connection nerves. from the nerves exactly. run all the way all, to the skin. They, they connect to so, muscle, skin, and fat. Yeah. So what's interesting is the, the muscle connect to the fat as well. The vagus nerve does not. Okay. Does not have innervation into the fat. So the Only very the sympathetic least, system so, does. So at the very least with the vagus nerve, we can say 
doesn't appear to be any physical interaction between with the fat, the fat, not directly, okay. right? So the the, but the on the sympathetic side, that's it connects directly to what is called the what the uh, the white adipose white. tissue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, so the direct correlation, and then we know the sympathetic uses fat as fuel. So there's a direct correlation between the sympathetic and burning fat. That even on a hardware perspective, we know, yeah. and we see, see it on the software, right? Yeah. So my idea was like, fine, then I'll access the skin to create an environment that is uh, hostile to the person, but without stressing them, stressing them mentally, yeah. like, a, like a West Side would do or yeah. stuff like that, right? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. The neoprene is very stressful mentally. That, that's not what I tr truly what I mean by that. I watched Julian. Oh, I, was I, I just today. left the room today. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was at the bench press session. So, by the way, it's not even forty degrees anymore. Now no. it was like twenty six, so not even that hot. Today it felt like it was forty five. Julian Fuck walks me. up into the office halfway through, opens the refrigerator, and goes. Was that fucking water? Yeah. Oh. And I was like, it was hot last night. I took I the drank. ice. I, I put like, it in I drank, there. I, was I drank like, all of it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Exactly. There was still ice cubes. So I was like, you just survived another day. But you got lucky on that one. I, w I was freaking out. It seems that my left upper pec yeah. made me just freak out. Really? Oh, it was like, this is what I remember the first session. Because, yeah. you know, I took a week into the U.S. And I'm pretty sure it's the sugar over there. Because yeah. it kind of wrecked me, honestly. So I, we arrived two days ago, but bless you, I don't feel jet lag because we slept, Kyla slept 11 hours the first night. It was so <laughs> awesome. 11 hours. Like she, she went downstairs going like, what day is it? Where am I? Is, what, what just happened? When, I was like, honey, you slept a lot. We went to bed at 9.30. Literally, she woke up at 8.30 the next day. Nice. The, the next, uh, the last time when my, when my daughter came out here for last month or two, when she flew, it was three days of like 12 hours of sleep for her to get, hey, to get back exactly, to Exactly, right? So the, that works. She's on an eight-hour so delay. So I slept well. Right? Yeah. So I'm recovered. I'm not that jet lagged. Yeah. But I put the jacket on. So yesterday I was doing a uh, deadlift, not uh, two days ago, deadlift. And I put the jacket on. I was like, fuck it. I can't. Yeah. Like I freaked out. I was like, oh. So <laughs> my capacity to endure fight yeah. wasn't there. So I went straight to flight. And today, I did bench press and everything with a jacket. It's... Okay, so, but like the first day, I spent an hour and a half, hour probably, not an hour and a half, uh, fighting the flight mode. Like every time I, I start freaking out, like I would do, especially upper left pec. Yeah. Oh, it's very interesting. Like suddenly, like this right here starts to get weird. And I'm, you know, like I'm forcing myself nose breeze because I want to go. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm freaking out. And then freak. the whole time I'm like, so <laughs> I'm talking girl going like, I will not let myself freak out. But I had to, so back to the. Uh, higher brain function in order to stop the sympathetic from going too far. Yeah. That's something I'll talk about. It's a hack that I have, but <gasps> yeah. like I'm not capable of generating the fight that I was when I left. There's no question there. I'm a little, I'm a bitch right now. Like I was <laughs> like, you mother, yeah, you little bitch, you go back under that bar and finish the set. I was like, but I don't want to. I'm kind of freaking, I'm like, fuck off. Go under the, and then so the entire time I'm like, stop. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I lost some capacity for fight. That's a software stuff, right? Yeah. Because uh, with the check and all, I, said, I don't want to be here. I'm like, fuck off. Yes, you do. Yeah. So I had to, you can still do that, but uh, you, the environment was almost too hostile for me. Yeah. Like with the jacket, it's, it was too much heat being created, probably because I'm sweating out the sugar, honestly. I think yeah. the sugar fucked me up. Gut flora, mm -hmm. autism, the whole thing, I think the f sugar fucks me up. So I had to still get rid of whatever uh, yeah, it's got to leave your body it's got to leave my body right and it probably has to leave my system as well like yeah. in the sense of yes the software got kind of impacted right yeah. maybe the gut flora has to rebuild whatever the fuck it is but uh, you might uh, have to recarve some new channels <laughs> i am I'm, I'm just putting the jacket to more and doing you know not that but doing something else because i'm like i need to like i need to get back into the fight mode that i that i had when i left yeah and I, right now it's not there so yeah. that that's the software right so the jacket is too hostile for me make, making me want to leave so, so the, turning into flight mode yeah so the neoprene is one way we can as well force that right as well so if you had a neoprene in the right gym environment wanting to be there then you would probably achieve the best sympathetic response so what does that mean sympathetic response some of these techniques too to build the so. thing that works right so you could do some high intensity training with some of your boys who you want to make sure you kick their ass a little bit exactly so running. i would not use the neoprene do, not for that yeah. uh for cardio because i think it just takes you too far yeah. but i mean for just the sympathetic side yeah do a little of that make sure you do Strength enough heavy stuff with your to boys push. do a strongman training with a neoprene with your boys and yeah. kick try to kick everybody's yeah. ass but remember the second you don't want to be there anymore 
usually the neoprene will start to make you freak out, yeah. you're gonna have to control that. Yeah. So there's gonna be, that's where the machine, you know, flow under pressure comes in is, you'll need some of that flow to not go into flight. Yeah. And that's where I think the progress is. So what I do when I uh, train with neoprene is I look for the panic button. The one that gives me a funny, fucking panic attack, which I've found today, mm -hmm. which is the left upper pec. And once I'm in, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, no. And do not go into panic. So I spend an hour going, no, yeah. no, 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 stay in it, no, no. <laughs> and then every time I'm like, no, no. And I, oh, I was yeah. right on the edge for like an hour straight. Yeah. Oh, but I, I believe that's where the gains are. Yeah. Because then you like says those those parts that are either in freeze or that you don't want to go toward. Again, left upper, upper peg for me. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, I'm getting there. But that requires. That's where the the strong mindset is required. Mm -hmm. Except the strong mindset by itself will not take you there. Yeah. But if you have a strong mindset with the correct environment, now we're going somewhere. Yeah. Right, so I think that's the key. And so what does the sympathetic trigger will, will show you? That's the highest, it's a, that's a, it's serotonin. I talked about this in another podcast, but you, that's where the fat burning will happen, okay. right? Because of the sympathetic innervation. The fight mode is where the good stuff happens. That's where we see dopamine, serotonin, testosterone production, yeah. uh, fat burning, all that stuff, yeah. right? So, and that's the important part, right? So without the, the strong sympathetic, we can tell that there will be no production of muscle and also, the we're going to Gradual produce fat. Of fat exactly yeah. and then so that's the, the role of the sympathetic now we're going to talk about the role of the parasympathetic in producing fat okay so we say producing fat not body weight as in muscle because that's not what the study is going to show the study is not made to see if you produce muscle you will but that's not what is interesting for that study they're only doing it on fat why because that study is designed to study obesity and nothing else mm -hmm. so you're gonna have to extrapolate a little bit as to how this works yeah. and we'll do that and there the may end. be some holes that you may have to figure out we're to, gonna have to fill yeah. up the holes at the end yeah. of the podcast because of that yeah right so uh, i'm gonna so i'm gonna read the article from uh wikipedia because it's very good so i know there's a lot of you of their uh, snobs out there that are gonna go well it's not uh, Wikipedia <laughs> is not a medical uh, paper, which is very true. That's not why I'm going to do that. You're going to use this, right? You're going to go on Wikipedia, get the selfish brain theory. It's right there. And then there are plenty of uh, studies that you can click on yeah. and do all the work for yourself, yeah. right? So it's not a real study like before. The reason is there's many, many studies that come into this and I don't feel like talking about all of them. So I'm going to instead go at the article, which actually I find very good. So there we go. The selfish brain theory described the characteristic of the human brain to cover its own comparably high energy requirements with the utmost of priorities when regulating energy fluxes in the organism. Right? So basically, yep. okay, simple enough. The brain behaves selfishly in this respect. The selfish brain theory, amongst other things, provides a possible explanation for the origin of obesity, the severe and pathological form of overweight. The Lubeck obesity and diabetes specialist, Akim Peters, developed the fundamentals of the theory between 98 and 204. The um, inter interdisciplinary selfish brain, brain glucose and metabolic syndrome research group headed by Peters and supported by the German Research Foundation at the University of Lübeck has in the meantime been able to enforce the basics of the theory through experimental research. So again, this is early, right, into the research into obesity because we're starting to understand that is not as simple as food in versus energy yeah. out, right? So um, the brain performs many sections of the, for the human organism. Most are of a cognitive nature and concern the regulation of the motor system. Yeah. Um, so a previous, a previously lesser investigated aspect of brain activity was the regulation of energy metabolism. The selfish brain theory sheds new light on this function. See, so it's very important. It states that the brain behaves selfishly by controlling energy fluxes in such a way that it allocates energy to itself before the needs of other organs are satisfied. So that's very important because the energy goes to the brain first. That will explain a bunch of stuff. The internal energy consumption of the brain is very high. Although its mass constitutes only 2% of the entire body weight, it consumes 20% of the carbohydrates ingested over a 24-hour period. So it's why? Because it, it corresponds to 100 grams of glucose a day. That's half the daily requirement for a human being. So that means that the brain uses more half, than half the sugar. More than half the glucose, yeah. not sugar, well, glucose. Yeah, yeah. Glucose being produced in the body. So, um, so the scientific community assumed that the energy needs of the brain, the muscle and the organs were all met in parallel. 
the hypothalamus and area of the upper brain stem were thought to play a central role in regulating two feedback loops with narrow limits. The lipostatic theory, established by uh, Gordon Kennedy in 1953, described the fat deposition feedback system that the uh, hypothalamus receives signals from circulatory metabolic products or hormones about how much adipose tissue there is in the body, as well as prevailing metabolic status. Using these signals, the hypothalamus can adapt the ab absorption nutrients so that the body fat's deposit remains constant. That's called lipostasis. So what they thought was obesity, where that lipostasis was a fucked up stuff, so therefore you don't understand that you have enough fat and you keep producing it. Yeah. That was one way they thought obesity might be that, that lipostasis is sarcomeostasis, the same idea, right? Yeah. Which means you have enough fat. There's just constantly feedback from the body on how much you have enough. energy right. we there's have a, There's a moment fat. where the hypothalamus yeah. tell you you have enough fat. Yeah. And it was thought that, you know, obese people, that system, that feedback loop is not working. So they just yeah. keep producing, that which makes them hungry. And therefore, they eat more, therefore, they produce more. Right. The glucostatic theory developed in the same year by Jean Mayer, Describe the blood glucose feedback system. According to this theory, the hypothalamus controls the absorption of nutrients via receptors that measure the glucose level in the blood. In this way, a certain glucose concentration is set by adjusting the intake of nutrients. Mayer also included in the brain, of his, uh, brain in his calculation, although he considered that food intake served to safeguard the energy homeostasis of the central nervous system, he did imply that the energy flux from the body to the brain was a passive process. But so that, that's basically referring to the afferent. Basically, what they say that the hypothalamus goes, we need more glucose, therefore I need more food. Yeah. That will uh, produce so protein, fats, fat, protein, carbs, sugar, all that stuff. Yeah. That the hypothalamus. So any that's what they say, like um, you know, like the hypothalamus is an issue with obese people, stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Because they think that obesity is created by a uh, by those two feedback loops, either one or dysfunction. both. Dysfunction. Yeah. Dysfunction. Yeah. Exactly. On the basis of these theories, a number of international research groups still position the origin of obesity in a disorder in one of the two uh, above described feedback systems. Uh, however, there are scenarios in weight regulation that cannot be explained in this way. For example, upon inanition of the body, like during fasting, almost all of the organs such as the heart, liver, spleen and kidneys dramatically lose weight, approximately 40% and the blood glucose concentration falls. During this time, however, the brain mass hardly changes, less than 2% 2, 2 on average. So the brain is not touched by that. A further example illust uh, illustrates the inherent conflict between these two explanatory approaches. Although large amounts of the appetite suppressing hormones leptin are released in, in obese individuals, they are still afflicted with a ravenous hunger once their blood glucose falls. Even though, uh, basically, the, uh, the appetite suppressing hormone leptin is released. Yes, but actually we saw that from the melanocortin axis. When the sympathetic uh, system is activated, it tells the body to not be hungry. Yeah. It, uh, hunger, hunger gets shut down during a sympathetic reaction, right? When you're on the parasympathetic side, the hunger shoots up. Yeah. And so even if, when leptin is released, it doesn't matter. They're still hungry. Be why? Because it's not a hardware stuff. It's a software stuff, right? So... Um, so, the selfish brain theory assumes there is no other feedback control system that is superordinate in the blood glucose and fat feedback control system that matters more than those two. Uh, a feedback system is meant here in which the cerebral hemisphere, the integrating organ for the entire nervous system, control the ATP production. Okay, we don't need to go into that one. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Right, so the brain can cover its energy needs, particularly those of the cerebral hemispheres, either by allocation or nutrient intake. Right, so whether you get from the body or you yeah. from food. The corresponding signal to the subordinate regular system originates in the cerebral hemisphere. Yeah. The most phylogenetically recent part of the brain, so that's a higher brain function, is characterized by a high plasticity and a high capacity to learn with this process. So that's exactly what yeah. we refer to, right? That's why they say uh, phylogenetically recent, it means just evolutionary part, that's the latest one to be so developed. It's start there. Yeah, it's gonna start there always. It is always able to adapt its regulatory processes by processing responses from the periphery, whatever. Energy uh, uh, procurement by the brain is complicated by three factors. The brain always requires energy whenever it's needed and does that first. It can only store energy in a very restricted form. Uh, therefore, uh, it's an energy on demand system. What does that matter? That means whenever the brain needs glucose, it needs food. Okay. Okay. From the body or from food. So okay. it usually goes toward, uh, and that's going to play a part. Secondly, the brain is almost exclusively dependent on glucose as an ATP substrate. Lactate and uh, yeah, can also be considered as substrates, but only under certain conditions. Yeah, don't worry. 
you have to be considered all stress levels of malnutrition. So most of the time, it basically requires glucose, okay. right? And you cannot store it, which means it's always demanding it from the body or from food, because you cannot store it in the brain. Thirdly, the brain is separated from the rest of the body circulation, but the blood barrier, blood brain barrier, the blood glucose has to be brought there via a special insulin independent transporter. That means whenever he ask the body to bring glucose, it's actually a very, it's a fairly restricted way that can, can be afflicted by a number of things. And that's what is going uh, is going to matter. Allocation represents the way a healthy brain secures its energy supply when acutely needed. Uh, it diverts blood glucose from a peripheral, leads, leads it across the blood brain barrier. That's basically to explain you how the stuff read it. You'll see what I mean. Um, the acute supply of energy to the brain from the intake of nutrients present problems for the organism. In the event of an emergency, emergency food intake is only activated if allocation is insufficient, but to be taken as a sign of disease. In this case, the required energy cannot be requested from the body and it can only be taken directly from the environment through food. Okay. Right. So in, whenever the body thinks there's a disease or whatever, that means it needs food you're to get the glucose because you want more fat in the body and you're going to have to eat more food because that's what it's going to choose. And it's exactly what they're saying. Because what's in the body's fucked up as far as the brain's concerned. And so, and so it needs food to get this glucose. Interesting. And that's what they think obesity is from. Very interesting. Yeah. So this pathology is due to defects lying within the control centers of the brain. Such, yeah. These may be whatever. So anytime there's tumors, injury, genetic defects or whatever, it's going to start to go into that. So, uh, um, yep, yeah, there we go. So, so, go ahead. I think it's what's the really interesting is the difference between allocating from the body yep. what, the, what the brain needs and then needing it from food. Because if you really think about it, we do view, at least me, at least my understanding of this, I viewed what happens with food as, like they said earlier, this very passive yes, process. Exactly. You put it in, it all gets boiled up and whatever's left, yeah. you know, go, go, goes in as it, as it sits. But to assume, like, like it said, the brain needs energy on demand, yeah. meaning and it doesn't always have time to eat. Yeah. And, and, and how silly is it in that context then to say that the brain would have no input on, on, on nutrient partitioning when you do eat food. Exa storage. Exactly. So, um, but so, but if in the case then, if, if somebody is in that state often and never in a sympathetic state, hardly ever, right, that's, what I'm, train. Um, that's what I'm trying to, uh, uh, to find where I'd say that. So the problem where they were showing also is that, um, Obese people, right? They start for the reason we stated with the sympathetic and all that stuff. They start producing fat. So every time they eat, he goes straight to the fat because mm -hmm. the body thinks it's disease. Th th it won't touch that one. Yeah. So that means that every time he's like, yeah, but I still can get my glucose. Mm -hmm. So he asks for more food. But then you eat the food, he goes straight. It's, it'll get enough for the brain at the moment, but barely, then the rest is barely going to store. It's store as fat and so, stored to keep. And it's stored to keep because, and then even if you produce, uh, if you were to burn that fat the glucose from that cannot get to the brain. So the brain keep asking for more food, more food, more food. That's why they think like no matter, uh, like I was watching um, documentaries about uh, obese people and there's a, a woman who took like 10 years to get to 300 pounds yeah. and one year to get to 350. It actually speeds up yeah. because the fatter you are, the more disease in that sense, not that you're diseased, but you know, for the brain, the more disease you are, yeah. the less you can take the glucose from there. So therefore it gets it from nutrients more and more. And so you crave food constantly, right? And so, uh, oh, there we go. The selfish brain theory can be considered as a new way to understand obesity. Disorder in the control center, yeah. Um, whatever the type of disruption that exists, it entails that the energy procurement from the brain is accomplished less by allocation, more by the intake of nutrients. Even though uh, the muscle have no additional uh, energy requirements. If one imagine the energy supply of the human organism as a supply chain that passes from the outside world to the numerous options of nutrient via intake via the body to the brain as the end user and control organ, then obesity can be considered as being caused by a buildup in the supply chain. This is characterized by an excessive accumulation of energy into the adipose, uh, adipose tissue or blood. An allocation failure is expressed as a weakening of the sympathetic nervous system. The result is that energy intended for the brain mainly enter buffer storage areas, the adipose tissue and the musculature, only a small proportion reaches the brain. In order to cover its huge energy de demands, the brain needs, uh, commands individual to consume more food. The accumulation process accelerates and the buffer storage area are continuously filled up. And this leads to development of obesity. 
You know what I mean? That's crazy. That's right. But yeah. so again, we're going back to but what, what a good say? software versus hardware. What a Automated. great, what a great exactly. analog to that. that exactly. That and then they show you that. So the weakening of the sympathetic nervous system, right, yeah. is as a major role in obesity. It will. So every time, basically, uh, we get to do those stage of obesity, it means that's why it's so hard to make them come back. Yeah. Because the brain is at a stage where it cannot get the glucose from allocation the yeah. from the body. So it needs, okay, give me food. But the system that gets the glucose to the brain is fucked up. So that means the more fucked up, the more disease the body is, the less the brain is capable of getting its glucose, which is what it needs. And all of that is assuming that at that point, you haven't fucked up your digestion either and that you're not just having to shove in shit. And then the hardware is working, done. yeah, on top of it. And, and um, yeah, yeah, because then we talk processing food. And then you're stressing food. the hardware. And, exactly, and, and then it keeps on going like that. And so that's why things spiral out of control. And once they are at that stage, there seems to be that cut of stage. After that, it's so yeah. hard to come back. You just start sliding downhill. Right, yeah. well, yeah, and you can tell wh why, because from there, it starts, Again, the sympathetic only gets weaker. And so that's probably why they're in a fog all the time when they are, you know what yeah. I mean? Like you, uh, that documentary of the guy was like 660. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Mm -hmm. So there they are, uh, I think, 12 clinics in the US where people are, uh, can enter only if they weigh more than 600 pounds. Hashtag goals. Right. So <laughs> exactly. So do you know how they get Jeez. into the room? Because none of them can walk. Oh, so the room is with a crane. Yeah. Yes. Jesus Christ. They, the rooms are fitted for the forklift to get him to put them onto the bed. By the way, the documentary is about a guy that walks in. The only thing he can do basically is move this arm because he's on the side, he can't move anymore. Really? So the only time he's actually, his brain wakes up during, because he's always speaking like this yeah. and his eyes are like that. The only time is when he asks for food. Like I want a hamburger and I want there. And the saddest part is at this stage when in that clinic, they're like, we're not here to stop them from eating. That's not what we do. That means they, they, they're basically there to die. The saddest part is during the documentary, the guy dies. So you don't even really? see until the end of the documentary. Yeah, it's the saddest thing ever. I couldn't have dinner for like three days, you know. Jesus. Oh, it was so sad. And so all the people are there, 25 beds. 12, yeah, they're all over 600 pounds, cannot walk. So they all basically stay in bed until they die. It's, that documentary was so fucked up. That's when I was like, guys, we're not winning this. No. Uh, amongst many things. But so the reason I believe we're not, so by the way, they talk, uh, after that, they talk about uh, experimental evidence, so it's all there. Therapy, uh, the research group, and, but there's a part, the basics of the theory, uh, the selfish brain, da, 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 da. They, they talk about also the problem, of, uh, obviously, the, the psychological issues. And there was a very uh, interesting part that I can't find anymore, so I'm just going to talk about it so it's not too long, that was referring to uh, basically like. The problem also is like on the sympathetic weakening is like anytime you're, st you're, you stress, right? And you reach for the sugar, you weaken your sympathetic because that's a sympathetic fix we talk about all the time. Yeah. You, most of the sympathetic either runs on adrenaline or cortisol, right? Yeah. And because there's no action, you get the sugar right away. You don't need to run on either. There's mm -hmm. no action being taken. So you get that feeling of sympathetic, but without actually using it yeah. because right away you have a fix to the action that needs to be taken. Yeah, it and almost that weakens, takes you to the finish line. Exactly. Yeah. And so that weakens the sympathetic even more because there's no adrenaline or cortisol being produced. So the system is like, it starts to weaken. And again, going back to the melanocortin access, when the sympathetic nervous system gets weakened, mass production, okay. uh, fat mass production augments. So you could also see people that can't move and then you can see like how psychologically fucked up you are when you're obese and judgment and stuff like that. You end up in, it's a lot of it go from fight to flight to freeze. You're mm -hmm. in freeze, you're on the parasympathetic side that makes you gain more fat. Remember, sympathetic burns it, parasympathetic creates it. Yeah. That's why we understand the uh, trigger of the vagus nerve creates more fat. I think it's interesting too when you talk about like getting into freeze is the amount of time that someone actually can end up spending in that state you have no idea. is yeah. crazy. So flight or freeze can can take over your life. Yeah. And so flight you'll produce at least, you know, if un, unless There's you reach for the food. That There's some happen. action that's why you see stressed out people can be lean. Yeah, because they don't reach mm -hmm. for the sugar. But in the case of obese people, every time they're in flight, they reach for the sugar. That weakens the sympathetic, so that weakens the fight reaction. Yeah. And that's where most of the fat burning is going to happen is in fight. So the, the less you are in fight, Basically, the more you're gonna you're gonna gain fat, and so we see obesity as a sign of again as a weakening of the sympathetic nervous system, and we live in a society that will only promote that. Yeah. 
So we're going to get fatter and smarter. So the only way out of that is to create an environment every day for people to go and to basically regress. Yeah. Right. You need to regress into a environment dependent part of your nervous system to actually burn the fat and still create the muscle. And you're going to have to, if we want to survive this, the way we building society, and then that's the way it is, we're going to have to create an environment for the fight mode to stay active. Yeah. If we don't, we're going to increase the rate of obesity and kill ourselves. I always, I always tell, I mean, male clients tend to connect to this better than females, but I always say like, like, listen, you, we do all our training. We do all this very deliberate stuff and there's times to work, time to be heavy, mm -hmm. time to do things on purpose. There's a lot of diversity in how you train, but I said, do not forget that once or twice a week, at least you need to do some you real deal shit. fucking caveman shit. You need to go ape shit you know twice I mean? a week. Yeah. Like that's the weakening of the sympathetic nervous stem. I believe is the biggest threat that we face. Mm -hmm. And I understand where it's coming from, because again, evolutionally speaking, that means on the way out. Yeah. But we are not capable of taking it out no. right now. So we will have to create the end. And again, it's not something you can access with this. That's also the problem is people think, oh, I'll get, think your way I'll get it. You can't think your way out. Yeah. By definition, evolutionally speaking, it is not made to be entered by thought. It's made to be entered through the environment. Well, and I, th I like to think of this as it is based on survival. And survival is a skill. Yeah. You can't think your way into surviving a hundred times out of a hundred. You have to train. That is a skill yeah. that you That's have to train yeah. and you have to learn. And and you gotta be able to get there. And uh and, and it, as you say it requires training. It's like, yeah, but once I'm angry, no. It's like people think, oh if I get angry I'll win the fight. No you won't. No, no, you won't. Well, chances are, surely goes the other way. But uh, yeah, but that, that's that's part of all that skill that we have to develop, yeah. right? So what I found interesting about this too, if you look at the uh, uh, the phylogenetic hierarchy, like the evolutionary stuff, that means that because you do that with neoprene, where you train, you get yourself into that fight mode, and then yeah. you feel fucked up for three hours. That means that there's a way out of it, which means whenever you go into the sympathetic, right, accessing the higher brain function will allow you to stop staying in sympathetic where you get so stressed out because eventually you end up in flight. Yeah. Right, you finish a new open workout, losing. you're like yeah. this, and then you can be like hot and kind of messed up in the head for three hours. Yeah. You can't do that and go to work and be productive. No, and like I, I came yesterday after training, uh, went to a gym that had air conditioning yeah. that Kayla went to and didn't have my level of air yeah. conditioning, but it's better than yeah. none. Yes, right? exactly. So it was, <laughs> it was fairly cool. I still believe I was the only person sweating in that gym, yeah. except her. But <laughs> everybody else, I don't know, maybe they're used to it or maybe they don't work. they don't push. But, uh, yeah, but, don't work. but yeah, I didn't even do anything that exceptional yeah. yesterday. It was just yeah. kind of some work. And, and I get back here and you were here. And I was just like in shock. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hot. I was just like, right, yeah. it was just all consuming. Right. So now you're in full flight mode. Right? Yeah. So the way out is, is not to go through freeze and go like whatever. The, what you yeah, can't. Because you can't just sit there. No, you can't. Or you, you're going to have to go in a dark room with air conditioning and basically fall asleep. So going to freeze, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then get yourself back after that. Yeah. So once you reset the whole thing, or you can, through the higher brain function, you can bring yourself back to parasympathetic where the healing will take place and all that stuff. Yeah. So we're not going to use food. We That's when basically you're going to spend five minutes going to either find joy or a problem solving, do yeah. Rubik's, Rubik's Cube, do uh, think go figure out quantum yeah. mechanics, do stuff. Yeah. That's what I do after training, to, especially on my bicycle. Read, exactly. Something. All that stuff. Yeah. You need to bring yourself back toward the Vegas nerve. That requires higher brain function, socialization, or, uh, certain type of problem solving. I'll well, tell you, here's a really simple analog that we see in all of our coaches, or analogy yep. we see in all of our CrossFit people, is you have a class full of people. Hopefully they did push hard in this workout yep. instead of paste it, and they are fucking dead on the floor. And they have to go to work. And they got to go to work. Yeah. And and still, the, there's a part of me that sometimes feels like, sometimes you walk out of the gym and you're like, what the fuck happened to me? You're like, at the very least, I do feel like I did something. Exactly. But the problem is that state that you're in is costly. Exactly. And and so so in that case, group yep. fitness class, everybody's laying around like a bomb just went off and they're just thousand yard mm -hmm. stare. Um, what do they need to do? Socialization. After socialization. That's by and that environment, best. socialization. Yeah, that's why. Best. Don't kick people out. Yeah. Right away when they're done, on the contrary, you want them to spend the next 15, 20 minutes uh, talking and everything, because what they're doing is they're bringing themselves back yeah. from the sympathetic into a socializing mood, because they do have to go work. So yeah. they need to be back toward 
the the parasympathetic side where healing will occur where they be able to recover from the workout if people the longer they spend into sympathetic after the workout the less they can train the next day yeah like we can go after soreness and all that stuff which are not not soreness itself but the feeling of pain the next day being beat up by the workout you will see that the longer you spend in sympathetic in flight after your workout the less, worse you feel the next day. And then the less yeah. willing you are to get into that fight again. Again, exactly. Willing, Whereas able, if you can come really. back from it right away through the higher brain function, yeah. you will find that you're less tired the next day, that you're better recovered because you are, and, and think, you'll be able to push harder. And I think that's it. I think it's safe to say that your body would understand now that doing that wasn't so costly. Because and, you brought yourself and back it was right beneficial. away. beneficial. Yep. Exactly. And now we can be prepared to do this again. So that's what and, I, and I grow. That's what I talk about neuroflexibility is that it's the capacity to get to one to the other. So one into sympathetic, you can think your way into it. Yeah. But the way back, that's a skill people are gonna have to learn is get yourself to a max sympathetic and then teach yourself to come back. And to come back, you need the socialization, the higher brain function, all that stuff. So socialize. Uh, it's very interesting. I, I, I remember, in co especially in competitions, like strongman yeah, competitions, yeah. I get very much, enjoy the crowd, all the things. Yeah. I, that's why I like strongman. It's like WWE. Yeah. Yes. You kind know of what I mean? There's, a, there's an aspect of that. Yeah. If you do it right, it better feel like that. Yes. If it feels like a powerlifting meet, you're doing it wrong. I believe you know? so completely. Meaning you yeah. should be high-fiving kids and ripping your shirt off and doing uh, all the fun stuff. Totally. And like, so, look how strong I am. Yes. <laughs> so... But I would remember that you get a big crowd. You know, we had a couple of bigger shows that were 1,000, 1,500 people. And, and you get there and it's like, and now it's like, I have to, you have to stick this or you're not going to win. It's just a lot of shit there. The it crowd's getting head, loud. Yeah, and it the gets things in, up, it gets to and, your head. Oh, and you know it's fucking hard and you have to die, yeah. right? And so I could feel when that gets out in front of me a little bit, I would have to fully bring it back yeah. to zero. Because you're going like, into flight. You, you exactly. get into that, you, you know when it's or, coming because you don't want to be or I'd get to, Or I would get yeah. to this max fight that I know is going to fuck how I perform and I'll yeah. be in flight in 10 seconds. Yeah, exactly, that's you know? too far. And, right. so, and so I would always have to pull back and for me it was as easy as, as I would just have to stand there, couple breaths, eyes closed, like on the thing while yeah. things keep going. Yeah. Couple breaths, deep breaths, eyes closed and I could just, fortunately life's been very fortunate yeah. for me so exactly. I can think it's like, all right, I'm here, it's good, it's exactly. a good trip. That's, that's, Family that's, that's, lets so me that's do these I things, do, yeah. all of these things. Everything that I have and have built makes this capable and easy. And now I just have to go fucking kill everything. So now you and can. So now that's all. Vegas nail. Here we go. And back at it. And then now I can start taking because that. Because the environment off. is there. Like yeah. the competition, the crowd, yeah. they there. So all you have to yeah. do is come back a little bit through the Ve and then Vegas nail yeah. and let yourself. So you basically control your states that way. Yeah, because I've had it in, in other sports where maybe the skill, skill level, the fine motor skill level is a little higher, like mm -hmm. basketball. Whereas if you get too far cool. out, you're fucked. Full sympathetic, uh, the problem with the full fight mode is that your coordination will be affected. Yeah. Because that lives into the vagus nerve and all yeah. that stuff. So that's why the low waist exercises are better there. That's why you'll, you'll achieve a much stronger fight mode caveman style in strongman than in Olympic weightlifting. Yes. Because there's such an amount of coordination in Olympic weightlifting that it won't let you go fucking nuts. No, fucking nuts is... Uh, you know, equipped powerlifting, strongman, stuff like that. Right? Try, that that carryover into like like I still remember. I think the heaviest snatch I ever did was still it was the way I do other lifts. So it was just like fucking just Lamb of God cranked on the I thing. I did a muscle snatch fucking, at two of them. You know what I mean? That's and the only was, way I snatched. And, yeah. and it was like, uh, and, and I and I and then I went to I remember going to a, going to a weightlifting meet at the Arnold, and it's like watching fucking golf. Yeah. People were like, well, I was like, yeah, oh, exactly. Guys. That's why, but that's why there's some 16 year old Asian kids snatching more than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the meets are, it's so funny to see the crowd at a strongman event yeah. versus a powerlifting event yeah. versus an Olympic weightlifting event. It's, that's why it's I like Olympic weightlifting is like watching a chess tournament. Yes, that's why, I, that's why I still believe <laughs> that uh, John North, say what you will about him, was a goddamn American treasure. Because he goes to a weightlifting meet and is just slamming bars and being belligerent and obnoxious and so much fun. Because <laughs> the sport needs a goddamn somebody who's interesting. Uh, and I think that's, uh, <laughs> and he brought that for sure. So That he did. There's no question <laughs> there. Well, I think we got about everything we need to. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, okay, good. I do have one thing I want to challenge anyone who's watching this to do. Uh, it's a fun little project that I get to do almost every week. But YouTube makes... Uh, auto captions 
automatically generates English captions, which, 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 which I never check anyways. Yeah. And most of you probably every once in a while missed something from Julian's French yeah. accents. YouTube, Whatever. YouTube, like, just fucking makes shit up. It's so crazy. But especially with my accent, right? Yes. Even if you speak English, it's still ruined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, are you saying I don't speak English? <laughs> Is that what you just said? I just got this. I have you on camera dissing me, just so you know. <laughs> we had... Uh, so what do you mean, even if you speak English? <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> So when I yeah now you love me when I put our clips on Instagram what I do is I actually build them in YouTube because it automatically generates and then I just go through and change them for this segment as the timing and all of it so it's easy for me to do but I will tell you this what an underutilized hilarious thing that people can see because as of right now there's probably 40 episodes all right so now there's going to be memes about my this my is, French accent versus this is, this, versus YouTube I this get is it. what I want is I yeah. want I want screenshots <laughs> if you're watching the episode just throw them on. there you go that's yeah, gonna be I'll, the new Game. I want the occasional screenshot of Julian some shit versus that makes YouTube. No sense. The, some th there's some of them that I just have to start taking because they're repetitive. Yeah. Things like Schrodinger, Carl Friston. Oh, that it just makes when I say things that. up. Yeah. And uh, and I love it. So YouTube, watch the watch the captions. It's fucking great. There you go. It really is great. So yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> the second time you watch a podcast because you're supposed to listen to me oh, the yeah, first yeah. time. The, the yes. second time. The second time. There when you're you taking notes. Yes. Actually, really want to do us a favor. You can just edit all those and make them right. That would be I have that turned on, so you can do that too. Yeah, exactly. Just don't fuck yeah. with it. Make it really. Yeah, weird. this is Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Are you sure you want to give them we that just, control? We just crowdsourced all of our captions. Oh, my just... God. Well, okay. It works for Wikipedia. Please don't fuck this up. Yeah. Like, don't make it weird. Yeah, it's just so, all they, At least one or two of them <laughs> fuckers are going to do that, but okay. Just slide, slide something weird in yeah, every 20 yeah. minutes. <laughs> then you're going to take a screenshot and make fun of me on Instagram. There you go. Julian's like, don't ever fucking say that on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see the results. And I then think it could be good. Whenever they start doing crazy shit, I'll blame you yes, for it. Because so I, go. I go through and I fuck with like three minutes of it at a time or so, which is time consuming. But still, there is moments where I about fall out of my chair laughing. I'm like, what in the... It's like they're not even trying. What was that? Yeah. <laughs> or I think I'm really evolved because I can Jackson. understand it. Exactly. Um, but that's got us all wrapped up for today. Uh, Julian's brand new iPad that is broken now, in case you missed that. Not my fault. Not Kayla's fault. I didn't say it was yours. <laughs> I'm still pissed about it. Like, I had a very good case on the other iPad. Yeah. And he never broke this one, that fucking Apple case. I went, whoops. It fell like not even a foot. Yeah. Boom. Now I gotta go change it. Cost me money too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because you can't blame that one on them, really. It's like it I will, but I'll try hand. anyway. But yeah. Um, well, that's got us wrapped up for today. Strongfit.com seminars and stuff are there. Uh, we also have. I think there's still gonna be time when you hear this. Uh, performance seminar and yeah. nutrition seminar in Utrecht. Should, so, yeah. uh, but September. all those will be at the in, in September. End of September. Yep. Yeah. Then we have because we have the apprent apprenticeship apprenticeship month. month. Yeah. Uh, Jesus, September gets busy. Yeah. And it's oh, almost yeah. here. By the time you're hearing this, it actually probably is. September. Yeah, it's probably September. Yeah. So, my, um, girl, my birthday, too. Oh, shit. Yep. So, we have strong fit. I have the tattoo on my leg by then. Are you? That's the point. 30th of August. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. So, strongfitequipment.com, strongfitequipment.eu. Nailed that one. Strongfit one on Instagram. Manta. Manta Fitness in Australia. And UK32 and Tyler F. And, Stone and uh, Julian. Julian's Corner. Julian'sCorner.com is up and running. Yep. So check it out. We've talked about it long enough, but now it's out there. So I think that's got everything. I'll post the link to this. To this. I'll because post even the link to the Wikipedia. Yeah, but Wikipedia, but the selfish brain theory. Yeah. yeah. Then study the guy because he's been around for quite a while, yeah. but he fits very well with the software versus hardware. It was interesting when we first did the peer review of the Melanocort and Axis. I had just a few people who were like, that's a lot of deep subject matter for one thing because it was so deep right but i and, I, and the, what i said is well hang on because we get into application and more background yes. so here we are three four episodes later and i think people uh, they, have they a all much connect better... they all connect to each other yeah. but that's why i think it's so important to go at this like this because we'll go at it from one but then you'll see it relates to yeah. usually when you write about a principle it relates to 12 different what things I, I like so, to look yeah. at it like this you put a flag here you walk over here, you see what it looks like from over here. Yeah. You get over here and you see what it looks like from over here. And then, and, and then, and, yeah. and then I think eventually you can get a good sense. They, they of all relate to each other. And again, it goes down to the core, which is software and hardware. hardware. And, and understanding the difference. Even the hemispheres of the brain seems to be like, we're talking about that with Scala. Like if you look at neurological uh, disorders, it shows you that perception creates its own reality. That's yeah. not a hardware thing. No. It's a software thing. Yeah. It, it's a tremendous important part 
of neuroscience and I think science in general where it's going is that understanding of information. Yeah. I, I truly think that's the future of mankind. Yeah. Right. And we need to, the, the faster we apply it, the better we do. Yeah. And I think that application is the thing that we've been honing in on quite a bit lately. Exactly. So next Play, week. Playing the odds better. Next week more. Playing the, yeah. yeah. Planning, playing the odds better. Yes. All right. We'll see you next week.